to this beginning yoga practice. My name is Marcia Neeland and I am delighted that you've joined me this evening or this morning or this afternoon whenever you're watching this. So we're just going to take a brief moment and close our eyes and just do what we call centering, just gathering ourselves. If you're uncomfortable sitting like this with your legs crossed, you can certainly stretch them out or you could even sit up on a chair or a bench or just lift yourself up a little bit higher. So just a moment or two, just invite you to close your eyes and with your eyes closed, just begin by noticing your physical body. Where are you at today energetically? Are you tired? Are you feeling more energized? Are you feeling any tension anywhere in the body? Just meet yourself where you're at. And take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly release it out through your mouth. And another breath just like that. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through your mouth. And one more time, inhale through the nose and just sigh it out. And then just simply open your eyes. We're going to move, we're going to begin by laying on our backs. So come on to your back. You can move your blanket or whatever you're sitting on off to the side. And just starting on your back with your knees bent. So with your knees bent, I'd like you to place your hands on your low belly beneath your, beneath your navel and see if you can, we're going to do just some very subtle rocks of the pelvis. So what I want you to do is see if you can take a free hand and can you wiggle some fingers underneath your low back, make a little space there. So there's a pocket of space, we'll call that the lumbar curve. That's healthy to have that space. And then we'll press the back gently towards the floor so the space diminishes, it goes completely away. So you're rocking your pelvis. Let's do that again. Create the space in your low back. So you feel the pelvis rock down towards the toes. And then once again, just let it gently, so we're not pressing too hard the back, just let it come down towards the mat. Do that two more times, just rock. Space under the low back, lumbar curve, and then tilt the pelvis. And once again, rocking to the lumbar curve and tilting the pelvis. Good. Starting to warm up here, especially if you have a tight lower back. It's good to just gently get some mobility through the pelvis. So from here, I'm going to ask you to bring your knees towards your chest. Give them a little squeeze there. And then place your feet back down on the mat. So feel the feet secure, your knees are bent, and just put your hands on the floor. So this is to, this next posture is to fire up the back side of the body, to awaken it, to warm it up. So press down through your feet, please, and then just Slightly lift your pelvis up off the floor, not very high at all, just a little tiny press there. And then from here, I want you to press your feet down more securely and even try to draw your heels back towards your bottom. The heels aren't really moving, but there's a sense that you're drawing them back and you might feel your hamstrings wake up a little more. Good. And then Start to engage up through your gluteals now through the bottom as you lift maybe a little bit higher, but not to your full potential. Just here, awakening the low back and through the glutes and down through the hamstrings, the back line of the body. Keep trying to draw your heels back towards your bottom. Keep breathing. And then very slowly, Start to release your pelvis down. And when your pelvis arrives, rock to that space where you have a little pocket of space under your low back, where you could put your fingers there and wiggle them perhaps. 
and just pause in this very neutral, healthy position of your back. So see if you can maintain that space as you lift your right knee up and reach to hold the leg. Now you also could use a belt here if you have a belt or a, um, a robe, a belt off of a robe or even just a towel or something you could hold onto your leg, know that that's a possibility. And push your leg forward and stretch up through your heel. So flare your toes if you can, start to enthuse the muscles on the legs. And just pausing here, take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Now you can stay here, see if you can get that pocket of space under your low back. That will change things. And release the right leg down. We'll do the same on the second side. So bring your left leg up. Please press the thigh forward so we're not bringing it towards us pushing it forward that way we can keep that little bit of the even the attempt of a lumbar curve is important and then you can start to straighten the leg do your best to reach up through your heel and flare your toes especially your pinky toes and just breathing so when we feel resistance our tendency is to hold our breath it's my job to keep reminding you to breathe the muscles oxygenated and the breath brings a sense of calm to the nervous system as well. All right, and then release. So we've warmed up through the hamstrings there a bit. And now you take and check in on the hips. So please lift your right leg, cross the ankle over the top of your left thigh. And now again, I'm gonna keep reminding you because it's important, try not to press your back flat into the floor if you can help it. So bring your awareness there, see if you can keep that little bit of a space under your low back. It may not be possible yet, but just, just even attempting that is healthy. So right here, you can just let your knee fall forward. This might be the perfect space for you to stay in. If you're feeling adequate stretch in your right hip, maybe the outside of your right thigh. If you wanna explore the next stage, you could always bring your knees in. You could even put that belt around your left leg. So I'm taking this right hand through the triangle of my leg and interlacing the fingers. And that will deepen the sensation, but if it's too much, just place your left foot on the ground. Pausing here, remember to make your breath a priority throughout this entire practice. It makes a big, big difference when we remember to keep the breath fluid. And just receive one more deep breath in and release it out. Good job, and then release your foot down. And we'll simply do the other side. So cross your left ankle over and perhaps just wait right here. Give your hip time to feel this external rotation. Find that little pocket of space under your low back. See if you can maintain that. And then if you do decide to explore the other option, once you bring your legs in, your back will press flat to the floor. But you could always try to push your legs forward, seeking to regain that little arch in the back. That changes things a bit. This is called eye of the needle. Remember, the breath is your priority as you hold. Just keep circulating that precious energy through your body. And then release your legs. And one more here. We're going to bring the feet side by side and then open the legs together in butterfly. So this will help open the inseam of your leg here through the inner thighs. And then again, the position of the pelvis really makes a difference. So see if you can attempt to find that little bit of space under the low back, a little archway. And try stretching your arms over your head here, which will encourage more length up the sides of your body. Expand your lung capacity. So breathe into that spaciousness in your lungs here. One more full breath.
And then bring the arms up and over. Bring your legs back together. And bring your knees into your chest. And we're going to go into some what we call abdominal bracing. So this is a really effective way to strengthen through your abdominals. So you're going to bring your legs into what I call a tabletop position. So the shins are parallel to the ceiling. And if it feels okay for your back, make that little space. If that doesn't feel good with your legs up, then go ahead and gently press the back down. But see where you're at with that. Flex your feet, and then you're going to take your palms, lightly place them on your thighs. They're just barely touching right now. We have other things to do. So I need you to activate your abdomen. So just that means simply draw your ribs and your belly button down, like tether them down towards the floor. Then squeeze your leg bones, squeeze the flesh, and traction the legs up a little. So you're like you're pulling the leg bones just ever so slightly up. Now we apply a little tiny bit of forward pressure with our hands while the legs resist and push back. So we're holding here, breathing. We're not pushing too hard. So we don't want to kick in the hip flexors. We're going to let those be a little more soft. And you should feel deep inside there's a bracing going on in your abdomen and all the way into the little muscles that support the spine. We'll hold for four, three, two, one, and then release and bring your knees towards your chest. So abdominal bracing. And let's do that once again. So bring your legs out, flex your feet so you can pop, perhaps see your toes. Find that little space in your low back if that feels right. Squeeze the legs, traction up a little, and gently push forward. The legs are resisting the pressure of the hands, feeling a deep engagement, deep in the transverse muscles, way deep inside. And holding for four more, three, two, and one, and release. Now, if you like those and want to do more, you can just pause the video and add a couple more. Really, really beneficial to our, our core strength. And now we'll just roll to your right side and press yourself all the way up. We're going to come on to, uh, our, into a child's pose. So come into this position where your knees are wide and your big toes are touching. And then you just sit your hips on back and let the head rest. Now, all of our bodies are different, so if it's not possible to get your hips back to your heels, no worries. Another variation of child's pose is come onto your forearms and create a lumbar curve. Just let your bottom stick up and let your head bow. So you can certainly go here for child's pose. Take one more deep breath wherever you are. And then I invite you to come upright and come into a tabletop position here, all fours position. So your wrists are under your shoulders and your knees are under your hips. And we'll start to awaken the spine more now. So two positions we call cat and cow. So inhale, begin to slowly lift your chest and your tailbone lifts up and you slightly look forward. And then starting from your tailbone, go under to cat pose. So you're gonna tuck slowly into cat pose. And it's beneficial if you connect some breath with this. So inhale as you're gliding forward into cow position. And exhale as you're rounding, really push the floor away. Let's do that one more time. Inhale into cow, lengthening the spine bending the spine, and then exhale, we flex the spine, really push the floor away, draw the chin on in, and coming back to neutral. From here, we're going to take our hands one step forward and curl the toes under, lifting to downward facing dog. So you can lift your hips nice and high. And I would advise right now, as so we're starting off here, keep your knees bent. And especially if your hamstrings are a little tighter for right now, just bend your knees and get the advantage of lengthening your spine and lifting your pelvis. 
And then just take a moment here to alternate one leg straight, one leg bend. We often call it walking the dog. Just walk your dog. Give you a little nice stretch and sensation down through your calves. And then begin to lower your knees down. Come back to your variation of child's pose, either back towards your heels or that upright position that I demonstrated. Let your head release. And again, step into the breath. Let it be a priority here. Breathing into the back waistline, way down deep into your belly. When we live a fast-paced life and we have stress and tension, which all of us do, we tend to breathe more shallow. So we can encourage the breath to deepen through this practice. And then lifting back up. Let's come to one more downward facing dog. Curl your toes under. Remember to keep the knees bent. And this time, try hugging your feet and your shins towards each other. It feels like they're trying to draw in and touch each other. They're not really moving that much. Keep that stability as you press your hips a little higher and maybe try to find a lumbar curve. So you would be tilting your pelvis so your, your bottom is tilting upward more if possible. And then in your abdomen, in this region, see if you can brace, draw your ribs back into you, practice what you did on the floor. Good. And then we're gonna lower the knees back down and come onto our stomachs. So release yourself all the way down, strengthening the back here. So I want you to start you're going to see my head lift and turn if you're looking at me, but try not to look at me. I'll just talk you through. I want you to start with your chin on the floor for just a moment and bring your arms down beside your pelvis. This is a pose called locus, locus pose or shalabhasana. So we're going to let the chin rest down. And what we're going to be doing here is first in the middle in your abdomen, I need you to draw up through your core. So abdominal bracing, engage. Put a little bit of tone through your buttocks and then from there begin to lift your shoulders up onto your back and with an inhale just lift the upper body it can be just the tiniest bit it doesn't have to be high just warming up the back side calling upon all the back muscles to engage and warm up and get stronger so keep looking down at your mat take a deep breath in and on your exhale, lower all the way back down, chin to the mat. And we start again. Engage your abdomen, brace and pull it up away from the floor slightly. Tone your buttocks and then lift your shoulders, lift your arms. Keep looking down at the mat so you have a long neck. Now, if it feels right for you, you could lift your legs just a tiny bit off the floor. If that's too much, keep them down. And just holding here, holding here. And slowly release down, chin to the floor. And we have one more. So here we go. We know we're professionals now. Draw your core up, tone your bottom, lift your shoulders up onto your back, lift your arms, and then let your chest rise a little, your legs a little if that feels right. Again, we're not trying to go for height here, just where we can sustain the pose and breathe. And then slowly release down. Place the hands now beside your chest, curl your toes under, lift back up now to downward facing dog. Little bend in your knees. Take a deep breath here and release it out completely. And then walk your hands back to your feet. Let your heels ground. You're going to bring your hands up onto your thighs now, right above your knees, and then just lift yourself on up. Come all the way up to standing. All right, so let's do some lateral stretches here and some shoulder and chest openers. So bring your arms above your head, reach across with your left hand, please, and hold your right wrist, pull up, and then just lean over to the side. Just pausing here, 
Ah, oh, feels good. Opening through the side of your torso, expanding your lungs. And then come back to center. Switch sides. You're going to grab your left wrist, stretch up first, and lean gently over to the opposite side. Deep breath in. Feel your lungs expand. And come back to center and release on down. So take the arms behind you. I'm going to turn sideways here. You can interlace the fingers. You could even use a belt. So if your shoulders are, are tighter or if you have a shoulder injury or something, you can use a belt behind you. So this is very beneficial. So know that that is a good option. I think I'll just continue to use this belt. But if you don't have one, you can interlace your fingers. And then just start to roll your shoulders back like you did in Locust Pose. And lift your chest slightly. And from here, we're going to release. You could always repeat that again. You can repeat anything on this video. Just stop it and do it again if you want. And then we're going to take the hands now, interlace the fingers in front of your body, press the knuckles forward, and then take your hand, your head down. So if your arms were a basketball hoop, your head is the basketball, you're going to go right down between and just feel your upper back widen. Take a full breath here. And then release. All right, so now we're going to move through a slow sun salutation. And sun salutations are meant to stretch and strengthen every major muscle in the body. I'm just going to take it slow and steady. If you have a block or two, it might be handy. And um, you can purchase blocks anywhere now. They sell them everywhere. So just Google yoga blocks and you can find that. So you can have them on either side of your mat and they'll be there. I'll show you how to use them and you can try it out and see if it works better for you. So what we do is we start in a, st a tall standing position. And then from here, especially if you have a tight back or a lower hamstring, so I'm gauging this video towards that a little bit more. Most of the population has some back stiffness and some hamstring tightness. So we're going to start by bending your knees in this salutation and push your seat way back. Hug your feet and your shins towards each other. Draw them in a little and then push the seat back and just a little tight. If you had a tail, just push your tail up a little. That gives you that lumbar curve. And right in your abdomen, draw your ribs back so you have a little bit of connection there. Good. Pause here. And then from here, we're going to reach down, slide the hands down to the floor or to the blocks, which either whatever feels better for you. And step your left leg back, big giant step. You might need to move the blocks back a little so that they're right underneath your shoulders. And then from here, this is called deep lunge, which is hold and deep lunge. Sometimes it's beneficial just to move your hips side to side as if you had a tail and you were wagging it. So just move your hips side to side there in deep lunge. And then you can step the blocks to the side as you bring your hands down. You're going to step your front leg back to a downward facing dog. In down dog here again, just bend your knees a little bit, whisper of a bend and lift your pelvis higher. And then lower your knees down to the mat, sitting back to child's pose, which we did earlier. You can let your head rest down. You could even stack your hands and make a pillow for your forehead. Just take a full breath in, slow breath out. And then lifting your head again. So this part is tricky for some people, for many people. We're going to be stepping our left leg forward. And so some people that's easy to do. They can go from down dog and step the leg forward, but sometimes that's frustrating. So you always can do this. You can go from here and just pull the leg forward and then lift the back leg up. So there's nothing wrong with that. There's more, there's many ways to get to the destination. So holding here, let the hips move side to side. Widening the hips always makes the back help, uh, happier. Hips side to side. 
And then we're going to step forward with your back leg. Inhale, swing your arms, stretch up. Exhale, bring the hands to your heart. Bend your knees, come back to that position again. And then from here, we'll reach down to the blocks. This time we'll step the right leg back first. Pausing here. We're going to add something new this time. So you're going to take the blocks off to the sides if you're using them. And then step back to what we call a plank pose. So it looks like the top of a push-up. You're going to hold the plank here. So you want to make sure that the hips don't sag like this, but keep the hips up higher, not too high, right in the middle if you can. You can also lower your knees. So we'll just hold it just a tiny bit longer. You're welcome to go on your knees. Arms are straight and strong. And then lower the knees, lower yourself all the way down. Bring your hands down by your hips. We're going to go to that locust pose, chin down. Engage your abdomen and tone your buttocks, and then lift your shoulders, arms, looking down at the mat, and then lift your legs if you want. Pausing, breathing, and release. Please bend your arms, bring your hands by your chest, push up and back to downward facing dog. And then remember the transition now. We're going to take the right leg forward, but you're always welcome to lower your knees and bring it through if that's helpful. Or just step it on up through down dog. See what works for you. Pausing here. And then step on forward. Inhale, swing the arms, come all the way up. And exhale, hands to the heart. Very good. We're going to go to a standing position now called Warrior Two, or in yoga we call it Virabhadrasana Two. So you'll take your legs nice and wide, and from here I'll ask you to turn your right foot out. So you're just going to turn so the toes face straight out, and then from here start to bend into a nice deep lunge. So ideally we would love to have this knee right above, right vertical above the ankle. And then try to keep the shoulders more over the hips and then the arms float straight out from your shoulders. These postures build up strength in our legs. They are hip openers, so they open our hips. They bring a sense of empowerment, of confidence. And you can really feel your legs getting stronger in these postures. So just breathe and lengthen up through your spine. We'll hold it for one more deep breath. Just breathe in through your nose and release it out. Good, and then slowly straighten the front leg. Turn your heel forward, turn your foot forward and release your arms down. And let's do the second side. So turn your left foot out and then from here, lunge to a square. Again, if this knee looks like this, if it's too far past your ankle, then you, it's easier just to wiggle this leg back longer. And then voila, you have a nice 90 degree ang uh, angle here on this front leg. It's good for the knee. Let your arms float up. Again, there might be a tendency to lean like this. But see if you can keep your shoulders right over your hips. Nice, full, deep breath in. Release it out. Breath is the priority of this practice. One more breath. And then please straighten your front leg. Turn the feet forward and release your arms. We're going into a forward fold from here and a block might be handy. You could always have it out in front of you. Or if you don't have a block, maybe just something, a, a stack of books or something. So you're going to bend your knees a little bit here and then reach either to the block or to the floor, whatever's comfortable for you. And then just keep your knees bent, please. Push your thighs and your hips back a little further. And then keep your hips and thighs moving back, but see if you can stretch your torso, your spine long and forward towards the camera, so or towards your 
your computer or television, whatever you're watching this on. So long spine while the hips and thighs go back. In the middle here, in your abdomen, remember that bracing. It's important in all the postures. So draw up a little bit so you have support for your back, yet building more and more inner strength. And then from here, bring your hands on your thighs, lift yourself on up, and step your feet together. So they're coming all the way in. And now we're gonna do um, a couple, we're gonna do a balance pose and something that opens up through our quadriceps. So first we're gonna make the quads a little tighter, so we're gonna work them and then we'll stretch them out. So chair pose, we've done something like this already, but this one's a little bit different. So you come into, make sure your feet are hip width apart and they're straight, and then just come into a seat. Just the name is chair pose, so we come into a seat. From here, engage your abdomen, and then let your arms just float out in front of your chest. We'll be right here. You are welcome to stay right like this. There's lots of benefit here. Or you could explore more of a balance aspect by lifting your heels off the ground, and you'll feel a change here as you do that. You can sink a little deeper if that feels okay. Try to avoid leaning forward like this. See rather if you can keep your shoulders back more. We'll just hold it for four, three, two, one, and stand up. You could always repeat that. Just pause and repeat. Now, you might want to hold onto a wall or something, or you could use this next one for balance as well. This is called frog pose. Um, so you're going to hold onto a wall if you want with your left hand and then bring your leg up behind you, holding the foot. And try to keep the knees from going wide like that. See if you can keep the legs next to each other. They don't have to touch, but just a little space. And then roll your shoulders back. Again, you're welcome to hold a wall. This muscle, the quadriceps, can get, gets very tight on people and can have a bearing on some low back discomfort. So we wanna keep the quads nice and happy, nice and open. And then release them, let's do the second side. So if you can't reach your foot, you always could hook a belt around the foot. I have students that do this. They put a belt around their foot and then just give themselves some assistance. So know that that is an option. So you're gonna bring your heel towards your bottom, lengthen up through your spine. I'm holding on to a wall. Or you could also just use this as a balance pose too. Two for one, balance and quad stretch. And you can dance around too if you like. Oh, it's nice to have a wall. And, and let's let that go. All right, so just one more standing pose and then we're almost done. We're going down to the floor. So we did this one earlier laying on our backs, but now we are gonna do it in an upright position. Again, you could hold a wall. Um, I'll, I have to put my back to you for a moment, but you could hold a wall like this and then bend into a chair position and cross the left ankle over. So I'm gonna turn this way so I can still see the camera, see what's going on. But so you're gonna cross your left ankle over your right thigh. And then mindful that you're, as you sit down, that you're pushing your seat back as opposed to this, watch my leg, as opposed to this where you're pressing forward all the way into the knee. So I always just think seat goes back and then my bottom leg is at a better vantage point and I'm keeping my knee protected. And stand, and let's do the other side. So bend your knees first, and then pick up your right foot and cross the ankle over, and sit your hips on back. Remember to incorporate some breath awareness. Hips are going back and down if you want to feel a little bit more sensation. And then please stand. And now we'll come back down to the mat. So we'll take your, go ahead and recline on your back and please separate your feet to the outer edges of the mat. Once the feet are there, this is called windshield wiper. So you're gonna let the left leg fall inward towards the right ankle. So just 
draws in. And you, for an added stretch, you could add the left arm up and over your head. And now tune inward to the breath. We're starting to wind down the session. It's, in, it's beneficial to focus on slowing your exhalation down more. Nice, slow exhales, very soothing to your nervous system. Starts to slow your heart rate down. The blood pressure will go down. And then we'll simply switch. Lift the left leg up, let the right knee fall inward, and extend your right arm over your head, please. You can even close the eyes here. And just tune inward again to the in and the out, that rhythm of your breath. And bring your legs back to center. And then bring your feet together. And from here, we're going to go back into that butterfly position we did earlier. So the soles of your feet come together, let the legs open, and see if you can find that little bit of space under your low back. Let your hands rest on your belly. And let's take four slow breaths here. So inhale, let the belly rise up into the hands. And exhale, slowly breathe it out. Inhale for a count of four, three, two, one. See if you can go longer. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. And one more time. Inhale, four, three, two, one, and exhale slower, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then let your legs extend long, and let your arms rest at your sides. We always end a yoga session with something called Shavasana, relaxation, even for a minute or two. Truly, if you can do it longer, it's even more beneficial. This just teaches us the importance of being, just resting, letting all of your organs take a little power nap, and your nervous system unwind even more. So let your eyes close for just a couple minutes. You remain in this position. I'm going to be sitting upright to hold space for you. You can tune in to the natural flow of your breath in that position. Try to relax your tongue. Let it fall to the floor of your mouth. Noticing any thoughts that move through your mind. Noticing any sensations in your body. Stretch your arms up and over your head. And then begin by bending your legs and bring the knees towards your chest. Slowly roll to your right side in the fetal position. Just pause there, laying on your right side. Receive a deep breath in. 
and out. And then press yourself slowly on up to a seat, just like you were at the beginning of this session. And in whatever comfortable seat you're in, just for a moment, close your eyes. Greeting your body with a sense of gratitude for all that it does for you, helps you experience this thing called life as a human. And feel the gratitude that your body is sending back to you for taking care of it. And then join your hands together in front of your heart in what looks like a prayer position. And you can just bow honoring yourself for showing up today to practice, to tune in. The traditional greeting at the end of the yoga class is the word namaste. It means the light in me honors the light in you. Thanks for joining me for this practice today. Namaste. You can lift your head and release your hands. 